To the starving man, a stale loaf of bread looks like a bountiful feast. Hello YouTube, today we'll be reviewing the submachine guns introduced in the February 2nd patch, as well as going over some attachments for them. One SMG was added for each faction, the Alt F4 Cyclone for the NC, the ironically named 46 Armistice for the TR, and the Aridani SX5 for the BS. They're usable by all infantry classes, barring max units, and are not infiltrator exclusive. However, their usefulness will vary dramatically depending on what class you want to use an SMG with. Each SMG can be obtained with either 700 station cash or 1000 certs. The Vanu SMG does 143 damage per bullet, the same as Terran Republic carbines, requiring 4 bullets to kill to the head and 7 to the torso, 8 with nano weave. The new conglomerate SMG does 167 damage per bullet, the same as a Beamer or TX2 Emperor. It kills in 6 shots to the torso, 7 with nano weave, 3 to the head, 4th with nano weave. And the TR SMG does 125 damage per bullet, which I'm pretty sure should come out to 8 bullets to the torso to kill, 9 with nano weave. It seems to require 4 to the head to kill an infiltrator, 5 if it has nano weave or if it's a different class. The TR SMG has 30 rounds by default, the other two have only 25. All three can use soft point ammo as well as a double laser sight and a 10 round extended magazine under barrel attachment. The class most benefiting from SMGs included in the game would be infiltrators, so we'll start with them. Now previously, if you wanted an automatic weapon as an infiltrator, regardless of faction, you only had one choice. The 20 round automatic scout rifle, which is exactly the same for each of the three factions, barring the Vanu ammunition differences. With a magazine size of 20 rounds, it's not much to compare to the normal carbines or assault rifles, and that makes it quite easy for submachine guns to be considered better weapons. Since all can obtain a 10 round extended magazine, that would boost them up to 35 for the NC and Vanu, and 40 for the TR. The projectile velocity of SMGs is also higher than that of shotguns, but lower than carbines. They can also equip the suppressor, which may be a deciding factor for you as an infiltrator. I'll tell you right off the bat, the SMG is a decidedly close-range weapon, and you'll gain more close-range killing power in return for lower, long-range killing power by using it in comparison to the automatic scout rifle. Let's compare their DPS and DPM, damage per second and damage per magazine, or the total damage you can do without having to reload or switch weapons. The automatic scout rifles do 1,553 damage per second, with a maximum damage per 20 round magazine of 2,860, not counting modifiers. Now, we can compare that to each of the three submachine guns, which are all superior in both categories. Now, there's a reason I include damage per magazine. The damage calculation in all of my videos assumes you're fighting more than one enemy. It's expected you're fighting at least two opponents at the same time, so damage per magazine also factors into the equations that I use. But in the case of the Infiltrator, both DPS and DPM are superior to the automatic scout rifles, and that's not even counting the extended magazine benefits. And if you want an automatic weapon to boost your close-range killing power as an Infiltrator, there really isn't any contest. Sure, the ASR will give better projectile velocity, but they don't have better DPS or DPM, and the SMGs allow you to move at 75% speed while aimed down the sights instead of 50%, and the ASR doesn't give you that benefit. The ASR is a little more accurate if you're aimed down the sights, but that accuracy isn't supposed to come into play as an unmanageable problem if you're ambushing people at close range. And when firing from the hip, its accuracy is actually worse. And the ASR cannot access an extended magazine, soft point ammunition, or a double laser sight. It can give you a forward grip where the SMG cannot, but we're grasping for straws at this point. If you want close range killing power as an infiltrator, the SMG is a better weapon than the ASR, regardless of faction, especially because of the extended magazine option, offering a whopping 10 extra rounds. So if you're an infiltrator, consider it a direct upgrade, if your goal is to fight up close. Now that's where the SMGs are actually strong, because it's strong for infiltrators in comparison to other equipment. However, this becomes a totally different story when you give the SMGs to other classes, and if you're not an infiltrator, the SMG might not be so good an investment for you. Let's start by comparing them to close quarters carbines, for light assaults and engineers. We'll begin with the TR Lynx. The Lynx does 143 damage at 800 rounds per minute. That totals out to 1,906 DPS. That's more DPS than the TR SMG. In fact, it's more than all three of the SMGs. It also has 5,720 damage per magazine, also higher than all three SMGs. The big hype behind SMGs was that they were going to have high DPS, but the Lynx has more damage per second as well as more damage per magazine, because the Lynx has a default magazine size of 40 rounds. In addition, the Lynx can also access soft point ammunition exactly like the SMGs can, and has higher bullet velocity. It can also access the suppressor and flash suppressor, and is only missing the compensator and 2x reflex sight when compared to the SMG. 
So the TRSMG has a 30 round magazine by default, 5 rounds more than the other two factions, but you'd need to spend 100 certs on an extended magazine attachment just to get the same ammunition capacity as the Lynx, which can also use soft point ammo, has more damage per second, and more damage per magazine. So really, you're spending 100 certs and an underbarrel attachment slot to get something that comes free and improved with the Lynx. And it doesn't stop there. The Lynx, as well as the Jaguar, also retain the 75% movement speed bonus when aimed down the sights, just like the submachine guns do. Furthermore, if you want to get the double laser sight on the SMG instead of the extended magazine, you're still being offered a bad trade. The Lynx can also access the double laser sight or a foregrip, so if you got the extended magazine, you're giving up the double laser sight, whereas if you had a Lynx, you'd still get to use it. Or, you'll take the double laser sight on the SMG and have less ammunition than the Lynx. You can't win here. The table's tilted, the game is rigged. Now you might be thinking, well, what about accuracy? Surely the SMG has something better than the Lynx. Well, that's pushing it. The Lynx's accuracy is a little bit worse on the whole, but the accuracy differences aren't particularly large, and you can correct a lot of this with a double laser sight attachment or forward grip. The SMG can't use a forward grip, and if you want to tack on the double laser, it'll still be missing a massive 10 rounds. So if you bump your SMG's damage dealing abilities up to be on par with the Lynx, the Lynx will still have space for a double laser, and then the Lynx will become more accurate, and your SMG's still been outclassed. The SMG does reload faster, but once again, the idea is that if you have to reload, your target is dead. And if not, then you're going to switch to your pistol instead of reload, especially for a TR player, because the SMG is for close quarters, where the TR pistol is dominant. And the SMG does have less recoil, about half that of the Lynx, but once again, the SMG is for close quarters, where recoil shouldn't be an unmanageable problem. And, when comparing the Lynx to the SMG, the SMG's horizontal recoil can pull left and right, whereas the Lynx's recoil can only pull up and to the right, making the Lynx's recoil significantly more manageable, not even considering the use of a foregrip attachment. For most people, this will result in the recoil bonus for the SMG essentially being cancelled out. For TR, the benefit of the SMG offered to Light Assaults and Engineers is that you can use it with classes that aren't Light Assault or Engineer. It is a step down from the Lynx in return for using it with other classes. It's only better in that it offers a compensator and a 2x reflex scope, and you gotta have a real boner for those two attachments. Oh, and the Bloom's a little better. But let's not stop with just the TR. Let's compare it to the new conglomerate GD7F and the Vanu Serpent. The new conglomerate submachine gun, the Alt F4, fires 652 rounds per minute at 167 damage per bullet, doing 1,814 damage per second. With a 25 round magazine, its maximum damage per magazine is 4,175. With the extended magazine attachment, this can be boosted up to 5,845 damage per magazine. Let's compare that to the GD7F. The GD7F fires 845 rounds per minute at 143 damage per bullet, coming out to a whopping 2,013 DPS, with a maximum damage per magazine of 4,290. So the real question here is, do you find yourself missing a lot of shots with the GD7F? The GD7F has more damage per second, but the Alt F4 has more damage per magazine, if you give it the extended magazine attachment. The GD7F will be left out of ammunition with about two seconds of firing, so if you spray a bit and sometimes run out of ammunition having missed your target, the SMG may be a better close quarters option for you. Maybe. It's a trade-off of damage per second in return for damage per magazine. If you plan on the extended magazine attachment, that'll boost you at five extra rounds over the GD7F. Now once again, this retains the same problems with the Lynx. You're using the extended magazine attachment, meaning you're not using, say, your double laser sight. And this brings into mind accuracy again. The SMG is more accurate when firing from the hip. However, it is less accurate when firing while crouched and aimed down the sights, less accurate when standing still aimed down the sights, and only a little bit more accurate when moving while aimed down the sights. Once again, these are correctable via the use of a laser sight. The biggest difference will be that the SMG offers a 75% movement speed when aimed down the sights, as opposed to 50% normally given to NC and Banu carbines. But mostly, the same flaws with the TR carbine come into play with the other factions. It's just not as severe. Faster reload, bigger DPM, lower DPS. What about the Vanu? Let's try the Serpent. The Vanu SMG fires 750 rounds per minute at 143 damage, equaling 1,787 DPS. It also has, with the extended magazine attachment, a maximum damage per magazine of 5,005 damage. The Vanu Serpent fires at 143 damage at 845 rounds per minute, coming out to 2,013 DPS, exactly like the GD7F. It also has a maximum DPM of 4,290, also exactly like the GD7F. So you're looking at the same deal. A little more damage per magazine and faster reload time, plus the movement speed bonus when aimed on the sights, in return for lower DPS and the lack of an underbarrel attachment because the extended magazine is being used. Except here, it's even worse. 
The accuracy of the SMG when aimed down the sights when standing, moving, crouched, and crouched moving are all less accurate than the carbine by default. You don't even need to put a laser on the serpent. It's already better. The SMG is more accurate when firing from the hip, but once again, the double laser sight of the serpent can help you deal with that problem. The biggest benefit is that you still retain the 75% movement speed instead of going down to 50%. But if you are questioning its usefulness for the NC, you definitely want to question it on Vanu. In short, when it comes to light assaults and engineers, the TR have almost no reason to use it. The NC are offered faster reload, more damage per magazine, but a requirement to use the extended magazine attachment to get that benefit, and the ADS movement speed bonus. In return for less projectile velocity, less damage per second, less accuracy when considering the vacant attachment slot, Less recoil, which is also mitigatable because all those carbines pull in only one horizontal and one vertical direction, making the recoil more manageable and also the option to use a foregrip, and a little bit better blue. The Vanu get the same deal as the NC, except their SMG is less accurate, does less DPS, and has less damage per magazine. The SMGs are not really weapons for light assault players or engineers. They're not as good as carbines, and the trade-offs offered as a whole aren't very good. Now, I can still see some players with specific playstyles using the SMGs, mainly for the movement speed bonus, or if you're the kind of person who likes being in close quarters but sprays away a few more rounds than you should, making the extra damage per magazine in return for some lower DPS a good deal to you, then I can see the SMGs appealing to you. So it does have a place for specific playstyles, but certainly not for everyone. And I'd like to add that all Vanu carbines, barring the Serpent, when out of ammunition, reload faster than the SMG, cancelling out the reload benefit anyway, unless you're using the Serpent. Now let's not forget that light assaults and engineers can also access another type of weapon, shotguns. Shotguns are also useful by other infantry classes, barring infiltrators. So for medics and heavy assaults, who may have been considering the use of an SMG, well, SMGs are close quarters weapons, with projectile velocity lower than that of all the carbines, but managing to beat shotguns at projectile velocity. We're looking at SMGs being somewhere between carbines and shotguns. Now if you're a medic or a heavy assault and you're thinking close quarters, you might be thinking shotgun. So we'll compare the SMGs to shotguns. Now the shotguns were given a pretty significant buff in the recent patch. The accuracy lost per shot was cut in half, the recoil was reduced, and the damage falloff range was also nerfed rather dramatically, and this increased the combat effectiveness of shotguns as a whole. Now let's consider something. The inherent difference between a shotgun and an SMG will be that the shotguns are better at super close quarters, whereas SMGs have extended engagement range, not dissimilar to the concept of slug ammunition on shotguns, which I did a review of. So you could consider switching to an SMG to be another version of using slug ammunition. But now that shotguns have been buffed, their valid engagement range is larger. So let's try to average it out and do a comparison. Obviously, shotguns will be dominant at super close quarters, but let's assume a more medium range engagement where not all of your shotgun shells will hit. Barring the jackhammer, shotgun shells all do 143 damage, with six being fired at once. So that's a maximum of 858 damage per shot. So how many shots can you fire in one second? Well, this is just an approximation, but I recorded myself firing a shotgun at a wall and took one second of footage, during which I fired five times. So that's 143 times 6 times 5, which is 4,290 damage in one second. But that's assuming every single shell hits, which won't happen. So let's try to compensate for a little damage fall off, some variation in range, and a little more delay between shots for a live fire circumstance. Obviously, there's no way to exactly predict what will take place, but for the purpose of testing, we'll assume half the shells miss. We're looking at 2,145 damage in one second. Now, let's then compare that to the DPS of the SMGs. The SMGs all have around 1800. However, if you tack on soft point ammo, you're probably looking at being able to maintain your damage where the now buffed shotguns will begin to fall off. Still, you are being out DPS'd, and soft points seem to have damage fall off when the range becomes too long. Obviously, measuring it to a shotgun can't be done exactly, and there will be scenarios where an enemy is just out of range enough where an SMG will be more useful and do more DPS, but the SMG is more of a side grade. A little extra medium range engagement power for a little less close range superiority, similar to the concept of using slug ammo on a shotgun. That and the option of using a suppressor where shotguns cannot. Shotguns also retain the 75% aimed on the sight's movement speed, so them and SMGs are equal in that regard. In conclusion, the only class that really benefits, to a noteworthy extent from them being included in the game, are infiltrators. There will be some playstyles and some scenarios where SMGs will be useful for other classes, but you can say that with just about anything, so it's not really strong justification, and those scenarios will be nowhere near as common as they are for infiltrators. And that's mainly a result of the low quality of infiltrator automatic weapons to begin with, not because the SMG in itself is particularly good. To the starving man, a stale loaf of bread looks like a bountiful feast. That concludes my review of the submachine guns introduced in the February 2nd patch. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Later, YouTube.